Well, good morning, everybody. We're GFBS. We're Grand Fork's best source. University of Minnesota Crookston head hockey coach, new head hockey coach, Steve Johnson, on the show with us today. We'll be talking with him in just a couple of minutes. Show today brought to you by the good guys at Executive Property. You know, we all know that they do all types of commercial and residential work. I mean, they do it all. Kitchens, bathrooms, doors, concrete, siding, cabinets, trim, tile, whatever. They do it, and they do it very well, too. But did you know they also do snow removal? Best equipment out there. And guys that know how to handle the equipment and the shovels, they're going to keep your stuff nice and clean this winter. You want to find out more about everything that executive properties can do? Call them up, 701-330-1273, or check them out at executiveproperties.org. See their reviews on Facebook and Google. Barry Romo, Chris, all the guys at Executive Property with over 30 years of experience. They get your work done, and they'll get it done right. I know these guys. They do a fantastic job. Executive Properties, the one-stop company that can do it all. Well, if you have any questions for myself or Coach Steve Johnson, feel free to call us. 701-213-0863 is our phone number. 701-213-0863 on a Celebrate Your Unique Talent Day. Time now for uh, Jokes My Neighbor Tells Me. Here we go. Jokes My Neighbor Tells Me. What do you call a hockey player in a leaky barn? What do you call a hockey player in a leaky barn? Grain Wetsky. All right, Paul, what'd you think of that one? I thought that was pretty good. Yeah, that's not too bad. I feel, Green, like, I've, I feel like we've used it before, though. Uh, we maybe have. Grain Wetsky. Uh, <laughs> that was funny. Uh, Coach Steve Johnson, welcome to the show on a Celebrate Your Unique Talent Day. Do you have a unique talent? Well, I'd like to say it was fishing, but it's not. <laughs> I suppose this year you probably didn't get to get up to the angle at all much, did you? Well, not nearly as much as we'd hoped to, and, and uh, we did make it up a couple times. Mm-hmm. We made the long trip from uh, one time from... Oh, over the water trip. One time from Spring Steel and one time from Long Point. Yeah, how'd that go? Uh, first time was good. Uh, second time, not so good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we hit it right uh, uh, with about four mile an hour winds the first day uh, there and back, and the next day on the way back, it uh, got a little rough. Oh, boy. Um, you ever want to go catfishing? Let me know. I've thought about that. Yeah, it's fun. It's a lot of fun, especially if they're biting. Uh, anyway, you know, if you're a hockey person around here, uh, a hockey dude or a hockey girl, uh, people know who you are. But um, I want us to, I want you first off to just tell us a little bit about yourself. Then we'll get into the whole hockey thing. Well, he mentioned hockey, and it's something I've kind of been a hockey bum. Uh, grew up as a kid, uh, grew up by Purple Arena and, and uh, Elks Park, kind of mm-hmm. in, the middle, in the middle of those two. And certainly I uh, spent all kinds of time. Uh, trying to find ways to get out of the house. And, and uh, Elks Park seemed to be a place that a lot of us kids hung out. And we had a big, big neighborhood of uh, hockey enthusiasts and kids who played and just loved to, to uh, get out and not only play hockey, but other things. And, and so Elks Park became kind of a hangout spot for us. And, uh, but uh, played, played hockey my whole life and uh, was lucky enough to have some success here in town. And, and then uh, got into coaching. Uh, kind of by accident, I had a chemical business that I was doing, and <clears throat> that brought some opportunities to, uh, uh, when, as I got into this chemical thing, uh, uh, some hockey opportunities followed with it. And so then I switched back to being a coach mm-hmm. and uh, ended up coaching uh, high school hockey for a couple years in Grafton and, and coached with uh, Dean Blaze's first year here and, and then got in the USHL, and I was in the USHL for, for many years in Lincoln and you know, I forgot about the the Grafton stint. I I completely forgot about that. Now, did you go to high school at Central? Yep, I was at Central High School. No, that was kind of a dumb question, wasn't it? Well, uh, <laughs> yeah, I suppose. <laughs> Although I I got to be careful. I, I had a uh, uh, couple kids. Uh, well, they went to Central and Red River, so I oh yeah, be careful, yeah. Mm, oh, that's right, that's yeah. right. And uh, we'll talk about that too coming up. Uh, now, when did you know that you were going to be a UND Fighting Sioux hockey player? Well, uh, it was something I always wanted to do, and and uh, I my senior high school actually I left and I moved to Edmonton and played junior hockey, and uh, uh, I had some other college opportunities, and and it was really uh, probably after Christmas I was playing in Saint Albert, uh, Alberta, and and I actually thought I might be going to Duluth or or Wisconsin, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, and then Gino Gasparini at the time and John Marks and Dean Blaze were on the staff here and. 
and uh, about the time I was about to make a decision on one of those, and they got involved, and and uh, uh, so I don't know if it was something. I don't know if it was that they wanted me or they just didn't want me somewhere else. But uh, <laughs> uh, either way, I, uh, I ended up here, and it, it worked out real well. So uh, you know, you're juggling some other opportunities, and then uh, UND gets a hold of you. Was it a no brainer for you, or did, was there second thoughts? Uh, yeah, it was a no brainer. I mean, it was it was um, something. You know, I grew up sneaking onto the ice. Uh, mm-hmm. Danny Gunderson, the, oh, yeah. you know, the Zamboni driver at UND, I, I got to know that back door very well and, and would uh, sneak in over there. Not sneak in, but I'd I'd get in there and, and uh, look for every little bit of open ice uh, after UND was done skating on Sundays and all that kind of stuff. And and so that was something. There was, you know, my favorite player at the time was Troy Murray. Mm-hmm. And, and Troy Murray is actually one of the guys who, who uh, he played at St. Albert. And uh, so kind of one of the reasons why I ended up going there. Um, by the way, Bailey, uh, Bailey Beergy. Hi, Steve. I know him and his son, Max played with my brother Hunter and is amazing. I love hockey. Thanks, Bailey. Now, uh, let's fast forward a little bit. Uh, UND, uh, boy, I tell you what, you had a hell of a run there too. Yeah, we, uh, I had a slow start. I didn't, uh, I didn't get, you know, uh, we had obviously great players. Mm -hmm. So my freshman year was, was, uh, a pretty slow start and, uh, um, you know, I, I played uh, sparingly. I, I suppose it would be the best term for it. And and uh, but uh, we had we had like I said a, a great group of, of guys there. And and then uh, my sophomore year was decent. And uh, obviously then my junior and senior year it went real well. Now you were you were part of the Herkus Circus, is that right? Yeah, my junior year, uh, Tony and I and Bob were were you know we all came in together and and certainly developed a you know, great friendship. And, and that was probably more important than anything was just the friendship that we had. And obviously we were good, you know, teammates and everything. And, uh, but we lived together and, and, uh, ended up, you know, I didn't play with them. You know, the Herker circus was, was something that, uh, was a, a name. And I think I only played on their line for about the first six games. Okay. And then, uh, um, I played wing with them. Tony played in the middle. And then I actually, I, I was moved off that, uh, group and actually, uh, played in the middle, uh, with other players after that. And I played with them on the power play all the mm-hmm. time, but uh, uh, I only played, I think, six games with them on the, at the actual okay. line. Uh, you win a national title in 87. Do you, uh, do you wear the ring? Uh, you know, uh, sometimes. Yeah. I, I don't uh, uh, wear it very often. You know, if there's uh, something where I got to dress up a little bit or if there's some kind of event, might you know, mm-hmm. some type of a hockey event or sure. something, I might uh, put it on. But um, I probably should wear it more. Yeah. Uh, and... Uh, my uh, my wife uh, tells me that, but uh, um, it's something that maybe uh, as I continue to get older, maybe I'll uh, wear it a little more too. Um, and then, um, what did it mean to be a Hobie Baker finalist? I mean, it, man, that puts you way up in this group, you know? Yeah, the uh, you know, my had some opportunities to leave after my junior year, which, which obviously a lot of guys did, and and. Uh, uh, you know, ended up coming back, and and that was certainly a great decision because then uh, uh, certainly it was, you know, given a great opportunity to to uh, kind of try and lead that team, and, mm-hmm. and we, we had we had another another great team that year, and and it didn't go as well obviously as our junior year, but uh, personally it, it it went real well, and it just you know lots of numbers and lots of uh, scoring opportunities, so that was something that was uh, pretty exciting too. Uh, do you remember your best day ever as a player? Or were there more than one? Well, I mean, you know, team-wise, obviously, we went in the national championship, which which actually was, you know, it actually got to the point where we expected it. So mm-hmm. it was a little bit uh, kind of odd to say, but, you know, it, it wasn't a surprise to us at that time, but it was a, certainly a great moment. But, you know, there's a couple different, uh, I suppose, you know, situations at UND that were, were great you know, great days and, and certainly great memories, but uh, hard to hard to pinpoint one, I think. Do you remember what you did after winning the national championship game? Uh, did you did you go out? Did you guys do something? Any fun things happen after that? Oh, well, I'm sure there's a couple. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, there, you know, we got on a plane, obviously. And mm-hmm. we, it was in Joe Louis Arena, and, and uh, we flew back that night. And, and I, I remember people getting on the the intercom of the airplane and had all kinds of crazy things to say and and uh coaches probably had their ears plugged but that, uh <laughs> you know we had a house on dyke avenue tony and i and bob and michael moyne mm, oh yeah uh, yeah uh, we uh we lived together and uh 
1702 Dyke Avenue. Really? So, yeah. <laughs> I, think, I, I think we had a... I, we probably had another team meeting after we uh, got back. I well, suppose. sure. You got to do those uh, safety meetings and stuff like maybe, that. Maybe watch a little video or something, uh, watch some film of the game, I'm sure. And, and uh, you know, make breakfast for everyone. I'm sure we did something like that. But uh, You know, I would imagine the grins on your faces, especially the names you just named, uh, all living in one house together. You probably went to sleep for a week with a smile on your face, I would imagine. Yeah. i uh not sure how much we slept, but uh, <laughs> uh, when we uh, did go to sleep, I think... Uh, it was a pretty festive, uh, pretty festive week, which it is, you know, in any any team that's uh, fortunate enough to to uh, accomplish those things. Uh, I think there's, you know, everyone's got great memories. Mm-hmm. Of that. So, what do you think of uh, the bubble thing down in uh, uh, where they were the can? Or, no, where are they at again? Omaha. Uh, what do you think of of UND Fighting Hawks playing a whole bunch of games down there? Yeah, I don't, uh, and I'm not too aware of how the bubble works there uh, as far as, you know, like the NHL bubble. I don't think it's quite like that. I think, mm-hmm. there's, you know, but but uh, I think it's, you know, it's it's excellent that uh, the league has taken the initiative to try to do it and, and try to make it work. And, and uh, I don't see any reason why it won't work. And, you know. Uh, At least they're playing. Yeah, exactly. And, and I think, uh, you know, UND should be very excited to, uh, uh, with the team that they'll have and, you and, uh, uh, you know, given the opportunity that they can get there. And I th- are they playing, what, 10 games? Something like, I, that? something like that, yeah. But, I mean, you know, after last year, uh, kind of like when, when you were playing uh, with UND, kind of expected to win it all and then just have the rug pulled out from under you like that. I mean, you got to feel bad for some of those guys, especially the upperclassmen. Yeah, the you know, the seniors and the, you know, um, not not just the seniors, obviously, but everyone, uh, you know, the staff and, mm-hmm. and everyone who – put all their time in, uh, in the, in the preseason, in the summer and training and, and everything that they do to, to get to that point and, and to not be rewarded for that, uh, you know, certainly is, uh, um, something that they'll never forget and something that, uh, obviously our whole society is dealing with all kinds of things like that. But, uh, you know, as far as an athletic team and you go through a, um, you know, whole season with a, a group of people, uh, you know, 30, 40 people that are pushing for the same thing. That's uh, very, uh, disappointing. And, you know, when you're on a team like that, I mean, it is basically uh, your second family, you know, to, to go through all that and uh, have it taken away. But uh, we're going to get into uh, Steve Johnson's coaching career here in just a minute. Uh, by the way, Paul says, morning, man, always great listening to Steve. How about that? Uh, we got some people out there watching us. Uh, you know, if you want a continuous protection to any indoor space, you can contact Pure Mist Total Indoor Environment Protection. Uh, their multifaceted process uses advanced technologies to destroy contaminants in the air and on surfaces. Pure Mist can protect homes, businesses, classrooms, clinics, fitness clubs, retail stores, hotels, child care centers, locker rooms, and more. Now, this is the apex of indoor environment protection, destroying surface and airborne microbes, including viruses, bacteria, mold, fungi, allergens, and odors. And maybe you didn't know this, but Active Pure is an FDA-tested and approved technology to reduce and eliminate SARS and COV-2. That's the virus that causes COVID-19. Now, the studios here at Grand Fork's Best Source, we are now protected by Pure Mist. And shouldn't you protect yourself too? Call Chad, 763-229-7969 or go to puremistco.com. Protection of every second of every day, 365 days a year. Pure Mist Total Indoor Environment Protection. Clean spaces, healthy people. Head coach Steve Johnson back in the studios of GFBS. Okay, we fast forward a little bit. Uh, you did a little bit of uh, high school coaching, and then you jump to the USHL. How different was that compared to coaching high school? Well, it's certainly completely different, and and I wasn't uh, overly familiar at the time. I, I you know I went from Grafton uh, two years of Grafton as a head coach there, and then actually you know the one year at North Dakota then mm-hmm. with Dean when he first came here. And what happened was, is uh, Mike Hastings, who is a close friend of mine. And, yeah, I know Mike. Yeah, Mike's the one that actually called me and said, "Hey, uh, uh, he was coaching Noam Hot at the time, mm-hmm. and he actually said, hey, 'Hey, I've, uh, uh, you know, I've got, I, I know that Fargo is going to be starting a program, and and uh, um, I know the people that are potentially going to operate there was a group from from uh, Iowa, and uh, actually the owner was uh, an official." from uh, the ushl okay and so he kind of gave me the heads up on it and and had the contact info so i just i reached out to that group and and uh just to inquire a little bit about what was going to happen and and i i don't remember exactly how it went but uh i ended up getting that getting that job and then uh uh, so i kind of went into it without really knowing a whole lot about you know how the league worked as far as recruiting and Mm -hmm. where they get their players and how the draft works and all that kind of stuff but 
uh, adapted to it, and, and we actually uh, uh, ended up having a great, great season. And, and uh, we were late getting in, but uh, uh, we had a great season. Uh, I think we, we won like, you know, 15 of our last 17 games. And, and, uh, uh, but the ironic part about that, uh, in the league at that point, um, we were voted out of the playoffs, even though we'd finished second. And it was kind of a goofy deal. And uh, uh, the president of the league at that time was uh, the owner of the Sioux City Musketeers. Oh, okay. They were hosting the national tournament. Uh, they were ninth place that year and missed the playoffs. And somehow, some way, there was a vote that came through that uh, uh, the Fargo Moorhead Bears were not going to be allowed to play in the playoffs. And uh, as it was a crazy story. Uh, Waterloo uh, was actually in town for game one of the playoffs. And uh, uh, we go to our pregame skate, and I get a call from uh, the league saying that uh, we were just voted out of the playoffs. I think the, I think the owner owed $40,000. Oh, boy. And uh, instead of uh, taking the revenue from the games and paying off that, uh, you know, and we were, we were unaware, you know, on the ownership, mm-hmm. ownership side, what, you know, the business side of things. But, but uh, the crazy part about that, I had to go into our team uh, when we were done with our pregame skate for game one of the playoffs and tell them that we were just ousted from the playoffs. And uh, Waterloo, uh, P.K. O'Hanley, who still coaches in the league, Waterloo then got into a bus into their bus that day and drove down the road to Sioux City, who ironically now is in the playoffs. Yeah. And and not only were they ninth place, but they assumed the second seed in the, uh, oh, gee, in the playoffs. And uh, so kind of a crazy, uh, you know, so I quickly, quickly was educated on the business side of, uh, you know, I knew a little bit about how the business side mm-hmm. of pro, pro hockey worked, but, uh, you know, you quickly realize that uh, USHL and junior hockey is, is in essence, uh, professional hockey at, uh, in, on the business side. And, and uh, so that was uh, a crazy, crazy time for, uh, for all of those kids who went through that and uh, something that I'll never forget. I, see, I never knew that. Uh, I never knew that. Uh, you end up moving on. Uh, very successful, I think, 10 years yeah, I was uh, 11 years in Lincoln. 11 years in Lincoln. Now, were you also GM or were you just coach or did you have both roles? Yep, I was coach and GM and, and, and that actually happened the next day. Was, oh, wow. It, it was the next day. It was Mike Hastings again who said, uh, hey, uh, one of our housing parents here in Omaha has you know purchased the rights to a new franchise and it's going into Lincoln, Nebraska. And uh, uh, are you interested? And and I, you know, of course I am, but, you know, can we, you know, there were some new buyers uh, coming in, uh, some, a friend of mine, uh, actually Dave Noah, mm-hmm. a friend of mine who was in, involved with a group in Fargo that was trying to get the ownership out of this guy's hands that owned it. Um, and, uh, but it was going to be a time, you know, it was going to take some time to get this done. And I would have loved to have stayed in Fargo. Um, my wife at that time, when I, I when I told her, I, my, my wife still today, but mm-hmm. my wife back, uh, so when I told her, I said, you know, we're going to have an opportunity to go to Lincoln, Nebraska. And uh, she said, have fun, you know, <laughs> that type of thing. And I kind of thought the same thing. I thought, you know, there's no way that, you know, mm-hmm. I can't see, especially in Husker football land, how can a USHL team make it there? And, uh, but anyway, it, it, it re- went really quick, and uh, they actually flew me down, and, and I came back, and I was, had really mixed thoughts. It was, uh, I wanted to wait and see if, Dave Noah and his group was able to obtain the right. I'm sure you're weary after the Fargo deal. Yeah, because we just bought a house there in Fargo and everything. And so, but then it ended up, you know, financially ended up being a good deal. It it all kind of worked out in a real positive manner as far as uh, uh, me letting them know, geez, I'd like to, you know, I'd like to try to make it work here in Fargo. And and so then that worked out in our favor. And and we ended up going and ended up being an unbelievable, you know, it was a great experience. Mm -hmm. We were there 11 years and, and, you know, Lincoln became our home, and, yeah. and we raised our kids there, and, and uh, it was a great, great experience. And you also find out uh, Nebraska had some pretty darn good hockey at that time, not just Corn Husker football. Well, it, it was, uh, you know, it, it was an expansion team at Fargo, so that was very demanding as far as create, you know, finding all new players, and and so I wasn't overly excited about having to do that again in Lincoln. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I thought. Uh, uh, you know, the expansion team that we did in Fargo, I thought this is going to be the last time we do this and, and, uh, and then end up having to do it again right away the next year. But Lincoln was, uh, us. we actually, we actually ended up winning the Clark cup in the national tournament that year. And, uh, uh, that was something that, 
That's um, pretty rare. Yeah. And uh, so we set an expansion record and we actually, we, well, we set the expansion record in Fargo for wins in the, and then we broke it uh, in Lincoln. And, uh, but the fan base was excellent in Lincoln. We ended up, uh, I think we averaged, uh, uh, I think it was 6,200 people. Wow. And uh, it was something that I never would have expected. And, mm -hmm. and uh, um, I think that, uh, you know, the owners there uh, did an unbelievable job of marketing and how they sold the program. And, and uh, there was some alcohol sales there, which probably mm -hmm. helped a little bit. Sure. Uh, those people uh, uh, obviously like to have a beverage when they're watching a hockey game. And there was, uh, you know, kids skating around, uh, uh, you know, with, with no masks and uh, the odd uh, scrap here and there and, mm -hmm. and uh, just a really good brand of hockey. So it really caught on quick in Lincoln and uh, was, was a very profitable thing for those that group that started that. Now, did you find a lot of changes in the USHL from your playing days uh, if you would have been that junior age? Because uh, back in my day, uh, that's when you had an area. And I think Thief River Falls, uh, that was Des Moines. And it was Ivan and uh, Jeff Ulrich, I think, were the coaches down there. But um, that was a pretty brutal league there for a while, way back in the day. But, boy, that league has sure changed a lot. Yeah. I, I uh, you know, I actually, as a player, I, I almost went to, to – uh, Sioux City, actually, mm -hmm. and then I ended up going to Alberta, and and Alberta at that time was was maybe doing a little bit better job of of putting kids into college, and but you know during that you know the next ten years obviously things actually really evolved with the USHL and became an unbelievable league, and and uh, uh, but there was there was a lot of changes you know in my in my time there also there was just a lot of changes on how you obtained your players and and. Uh, you know, how it evolved into a straight draft and all mm -hmm. those types of things. So it, it really became a well-run, or and is a, a very, very well-run league. Oh, it's great hockey. And uh, you got to remember, that's basically like the minors for NCAA hockey. Uh, that's what you want to go to. You want to be in the USHL or in a major Canadian or whatever, but if, as long as you can still have your eligibility. But USHL, uh, especially you're getting over 6,000 people a game, man, That that's fun hockey yeah at that time it was you know the the crowds were better at that time um i think it uh uh you know th there was a stretch there where omaha and, and lincoln and and des moines and and uh cedar rapids and green bay were, were getting really really large crowds mm -hmm. and uh, uh that did drop a little bit it's dropped a little bit but uh, uh it's something that you know when you, you talk about the ushl it's it's actually you know there's 60 division one teams and uh and there's only well at that time there was only 12 ushl teams yeah so yeah in essence it's harder to get to the ushl mm -hmm. for a, for a good player it, it's probably because everyone wants to get there yeah like that's their first choice is to play in the ushl so when you do the numbers uh, you know today i think there's 16 teams and again there's 60 division one teams it's harder to yeah as a player to make it to the ushl than it's a college I, right and i think i think the there, it's about a 95% rate mm -hmm. of the USHL players get to Division One college. Yeah, yeah, I mean, the, the numbers are fantastic. and uh, But, you know, hockey's changed. Uh, back in our day, a lot of kids played more than one sport. They'd, sports would overwind into the next sport. You'd always miss the first week. But it, it seems like now it, it's hockey especially is more of a specialized thing. You see guys are playing hockey now year-round. Uh, they're playing in the summer. They might have to travel to the Twin Cities every weekend to play. But... Um, Hockey is huge up here. Yeah. I mean, it's big. It it really has changed, and, and uh, you know, I I played baseball. I loved playing baseball, and heck, we played basketball and football and we, softball and golf, and we played everything, you know. And and uh, and then your hockey season would start in in uh, November mm -hmm. and mid November, and and obviously that's you know we, we'd try to find ice, you know, we'd try to find ice, and we'd have our own little rentals, and but now like as you said, you know, traveling to Minneapolis for the you know for the top players playing elite league, and there's the the Bantam Elite League and there's all kinds of different opportunities and these kids feel left out if they're not, you know, mm -hmm. they, they don't have to do it that way. Mm -hmm. um, certainly these multi-sport athletes, there's, there's really some, some value to these kids and how they develop. And, and uh, you know, you, you could say that uh, these multi-sport athletes potentially have a higher ceiling to yeah. become better players. They got different skills. And, you know, I use like Robbie Bina was a great example of yep kid who played uh, he played for my brother chad and bismarck and, mm -hmm. and he played for us and and uh in lincoln but i remember him at, in and jake Mardo and mm -hmm. those type of kids and and uh i'll never forget robbie bina he he had this unbelievable ability to catch every puck 
you know, he's a defenseman, and mm-hmm. there, there wasn't a puck that ever got out of the blue line because he grabbed it. He was a he's pretty a good great, baseball player. Yeah. yeah. And uh, he had this ability to grab a puck with either hand <laughs> and uh, keep it, you know, keep it in the zone. And uh, But anyway, so those are some of the type, you know, some of the things that uh, – maybe get lost when these kids and they specialize and become just mm-hmm. so-called just hockey players. Uh, Jason, games were a lot of fun in Lincoln. That's Jason Hill. Uh, Brian, Steve Johnson, All-American. That's got to have a pretty cool ring to it, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Jason Hill. Hi, Jason. I have uh, haven't... Uh, uh, actually, I think I saw Jason a few weeks ago, but uh, we grew up with the Hill family. And, mm-hmm. uh, certainly uh, good to hear from Jason. Okay, now let's fast forward again, Coach. Uh, you know, you said you didn't want to have to go through. You thought the first time in Fargo was tough enough to get a roster together. Uh, then you moved to Nebraska, and you do it all over again, and you hope you never have to do it again. Now you are back coaching uh, University of Minnesota Crookston, and you're doing it all over again. What got you back into coaching? Well, a uh, couple things. I, I spoke to, you know, several different people that I, you know, uh, associated with and, and, uh, uh, Bob Motzko at Minnesota and, and, uh, Grant Patoni, who's now at Northern Michigan and, and, uh, just talked to a bunch of different hockey people. And I wasn't really planning on getting back involved, but, you know, one of my former teammates had, you know, brought it up to me. He just said, uh, you know, here's a great opportunity to, to get back and, and kind of educate kids on, on what kind of opportunities there are. And, and UMC is a perfect example of that, uh, this this certain player said, you know, you 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 kind of educated us and told us that, geez, if you love the game, you know, you've got great opportunity to to keep playing, play as long as you can, because um, you're you're going to miss it like, as soon as mm-hmm. you're done. Oh yeah, you know, like a, a normal kid who's done it, uh, uh, an average kid who's done it 20 years old, uh, they really miss it. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, that's why I always say that our Wednesday night beer league, our mm-hmm. men's beer league, mm-hmm. um, it we get a lot of 22, 23 year old kids who, when they get their third, fourth beverage in them. Yeah. And you hear how good they were, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, and, and how they how they quit playing and they wish they wouldn't have quit playing. Yeah. And, uh, but if, maybe even more importantly is if you love the game, there, there's so much opportunity, uh, coaching, scouting, being a player agent, uh, being a video, you know, there's, if you stay, the longer you play and if you're in a, a system, in a program that, uh, you know, you develop a little bit of a network there where you, you meet more people, you meet more You've got more teammates, you meet more players you play against, you meet more coaches, and, and uh, uh, there's all kinds of opportunity, again, to be a, uh, a player agent, a uh, scout, a mm-hmm. uh, coach in the North American League, a coach in the NE3 League, a coach in the U.S., you know, and, and certainly there's all kinds of challenges to get there, but it's, it's just a lot of opportunity to stay in the game. And uh, uh, Crookson's got a good sports management program, uh, and so I, I try to... Uh, but again, one of my ex-players who, who told me that, I, I think we counted uh, 50 or 60 ex-players uh, uh, that played for me that are still coaching, scouting, wow. agents, uh, video coordinators that are still in the game. And, and uh, uh, in fact, uh, just ironically this morning, I just read a, a guy who played for us and won a title with us in Lincoln, Eric Condra, uh, played at Notre Dame and mm-hmm. played some pro and... and uh, uh, my my son Luke played against him last year, and he's just hired as a player development, you know, the head of player development for the Blackhawks. Oh wow! And, uh, so just different things like that, that uh, all kinds of uh, opportunity to stay in the game, uh, play as long as you can, and then uh, meet as many people as you can, uh, be a sponge, and yeah, and, uh, all while you're getting an education too. Yeah. Yeah, and in Crookston campus, UMC campus is a nice place. Um, I know my my son actually uh, was helping coach baseball over there for a few years, and and I really like the place. Uh, originally, I'm originally from Crookston. I just don't tell too many people that. And uh, when you talk about Hastings, uh, he's a year younger than I am, so we played together. And then I moved to Thief River and ended up playing against him. But uh, he actually went to school with my sister, but. I don't get to see him very often. I think I've ran into him at a couple of World Junior things, and that was about it. But um, now, with when you're at UMC, uh, what what division is this? How is that going to work? Well, right now it's the ACHA, okay, American, uh, American uh, Club Hockey Association. Okay, okay. So club hockey's gotten huge. Yeah, uh, it is. There, there's no uh, you know no affiliation. Well, I shouldn't say no affiliation, but. You know, you're not under the guidelines of the NCAA, mm-hmm. which there are some, nice. real, some yeah. real positives. Um, and there's just, there's a lot of, 
again, so many kids playing, so many opportunities to continue to play. And club hockey now is, is filling a void for a lot of people. All right. Let's see if this is a phone call for us or not. You on end. Uh-huh. Hey, GFBS. Hello? Nope. Apparently not. Oh, well. Um, okay. So you got to go through getting a roster together again. Now we have the pandemic, the COVID-19. How difficult? I mean, I know it's hard to put a roster together, but how much more difficult is it with all this stuff going on? Yeah, you're right. I mean, this is a different challenge. Um, you know, when you're in the USHL, everyone wants to be there. So, you're, you know, the, the, the uh, creating your team and everything, there's never a shortage of who you have. At, mm-hmm. at that point, it's just a matter of how do you manage your roster and how do you get to come up with the best team you can? Uh, this is a different challenge. Um, uh, the way we're set up, uh, any team coming into, uh, it's probably the same as NCAA, but any team coming into the ACHA is, is the first year is independent. Okay. And you don't have a yep. league. Um, and there's no guarantee that you will get into a league. Um, and there's a lot of teams that play an independent schedule. Um, I think, uh, I, I don't know for sure, I, but you know, Jamestown and you know, mm-hmm. St. Mary, Minot, I'm not sure what leagues they're in. Okay. Um, you've got NDSU and you've got other club teams that play in what's called the WCCHA, the Western mm-hmm. Collegiate Club Hockey Association. Um, and that's a Division Two club league. Um, there's, so there's Division One, there's Division Two, and there's Division Three club hockey. Okay. Um, we actually will, so our first year, we will be an independent Division Two club team. Okay. Uh, we've already been invited to... To, so you have to go through your first year and play 16 games, and I, I'm sure that'll be massaged this year based on what's mm-hmm. going on. Yep. Um, whether it be 12, we've already got a we've got a 16 to you know we'll, we'll get to a 20 game schedule uh, starting January 9th and 10th. We start in Jamestown, but um, so we'll we'll go through that as an independent, and we will then be accredited or whatever the terminology is to to join a league. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've already been asked to join a Division One club league. Okay. Um, obviously, we fit in geographically um, with uh, Minot State, University of Mary, Jamestown. Uh, I was told Augustan is going to have a, okay. a faculty-run club oh. team. So I get that's the other thing I guess I didn't mention is you know there's there's all kinds of club hockey. Um, for instance, here University of North Dakota's got a club team, but it's all student-run. Yep. Okay. Uh, Minnesota Crooks and it's all faculty run. It's all, uh, we're, we're, we take care of the equipment. We take care of the travel. We take care of the ice time. There's no fees involved. Uh, I, I, I think I heard the, there was like 300 club team, close to 300 club teams in, uh, the United States and, and, uh, like 15 to 18% of them are faculty run. Okay. Wow. So, um, so the, the Minot State, Jamestown, University of Mary, those are all faculty run. Mm-hmm. Uh, those are all teams that want to take it to a, another level, sure. take it to a higher level. And, and uh, uh, Minot State, for instance, uh, you know, they're a, they're a club hockey team who's got all ex junior A hockey players. Yeah. So yeah. it's really good hockey. Mm-hmm. Um, a couple of guys I went to school with back in the early 80s, I know, uh, ended up playing club hockey at NDSU. I believe they won a couple of national championships yeah. back then. Uh, and they got to go to Arizona and play hockey, which being a boy from Thief River, they thought was pretty darn cool. Um, have you got guys, lo- uh, basically local guys, or anybody that uh, is going to be skating for you guys this year that comes from like the West Coast or from like somewhere, you know, kind of unique? Uh, you know what, there's, I mean, we, it's, it's certainly always going to have a local, you know, mm-hmm. majority of local flavor. And, and, you know, back in the days, as, as you had mentioned, uh, in the 90s and stuff, when Crookston had their, their great teams in yep. national tournaments, I think it was Division Three. Yep. You know, NCAA at that time, it was a, certainly a, you know, a big local flavor. But there will always be opportunity. And at, you know, we're, we're really not at this stage right now today, but in the, in the real near future, uh, we'll be in a position to, we'll take, the best kids we can. Mm-hmm. And uh, if that's a California kid or if it's a St. Louis kid, yep. they're going to have an opportunity. We'll always, you know, we'll always give the benefit of the doubt to local kids. And, uh, but it's, it's going to be eventually kids from a little bit all over, all over the place. Um, give us a kind of a, a rundown of, of who you're playing against this year. I, I know things aren't in stone yet, but uh, just for example, uh, especially if somebody wants to come and watch UMC, yep. uh, where are all you going to be playing? Well, our schedule, we, we've got games locked in with uh, uh, University of Jamestown, 
uh, University of Mary. Minot State is still in, in the works. Uh, we'll, we'll have that game scheduled. Um, so those are um, Williston, mm-hmm. um, uh, Dakota College, which was used to be NDSU Botno. Sure, yep, okay. yep. So those are all teams that... Uh, and they've had a strong hockey program for a long time. Yep, yep. So those, those are, like I say, we've got... Uh, We've got 16 games scheduled. We've got another six games that are just, we're trying to, everyone's massaging their schedule. And everyone's mm-hmm. got all kinds of movement in their schedule. And and uh, so we'll, we'll have opportunity to play, even though it's going to be a, a shortened season, we'll have the opportunity to play 18 to 22 games for sure. You know, with uh, your past track record as a coach, um, <laughs> I mean, I have all the confidence in the world that it's not going to take you that long to put UMC on the back, back on the hockey map. Uh, before I let you go, though, today, I do want to ask about your sons. Um, how are they doing now? Uh, doing great. Um, Max uh, is playing in St. Cloud. The North, you know, St. Cloud's got the North American League team. Mm-hmm. Which it used to be Brookings. Okay. And, uh, Brookings moved to St. Cloud. Uh, it's actually Corey Millen who coaches it. Oh, uh, wow. Ex uh, NHL or ex Gopher. Yeah, guys, uh, a guy who, you know, we, you know, in our great North Dakota teams, he was uh, the, the mm-hmm. best player on a great Minnesota team. So mm-hmm. him and Tom Chorsky are running the program in, oh, okay. uh, in St. Cloud. So Max is playing there. Uh, they've only played five games. Uh, they're just in the process now, obviously, in the state of Minnesota. Uh, there's teams there that are being shut down for a month. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Bismarck and Minot here in the. North Dakota are still being allowed to play with along with Aberdeen. And so I, I don't know what's going to happen there. Um, they're kind of at a pause right now. And it sounds like uh, they might uh, be on the shelf uh, until after Christmas. Oh, okay. But, but, but he's there. And then uh, Luke, of course, is uh, 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 he's with the wild. Mm-hmm. And, um, he was in Des Moines most of the year, but he, he played some games with the wild uh, last year. And, and uh, he's still got a year left uh, under contract with the Wild, so they're they're hoping to get started. I think they're looking at December fifteenth as uh, start of the camp, and uh, he's on his way home today actually for a little Thanksgiving and oh, hopefully good skate around here a little bit. But uh, so hopefully they get started, and hopefully all this gets going again here soon. Uh, Luke, he he was on the uh, the playoff roster though, wasn't he? Yeah, he was in the bubble, and he was part of their. Uh, uh, they had 28 skaters. Uh, he was part of that uh, group. He didn't play in any of the games mm-hmm. uh, in Edmonton, but he was he was uh, uh, part of the bubble there, and and uh, he had a great great finish to his year in, in Des Moines. And another team that was uh, Des Moines in the American League had a had a you know one of the top teams in the league. Mm-hmm. It would have been fun to see them finish off. Was he uh, was he nagging with some injuries last year? If I remember right, yeah, he got hurt. Uh, he got hurt. Uh, he had a great camp, and uh, uh, I think the Wild were certainly. Uh, um, pretty happy with him and and uh he got hurt in the pregame skate uh, of his first uh first day of uh, regular season last year they're doing a little drill uh, at the net and he had a high ankle sprain which uh as as hockey players know is a really nagging uh, yeah uh, you're better off to break it yep yep so his new skates those new stiff skates yeah <laughs> but uh, so he uh so he got hurt and he didn't play till uh oh he didn't play till almost christmas time uh or, well, it was into December by the time he got back in uh, last year, but uh, he had a real good season last year. Um, I'm sure I don't I don't know how much you talked to Luke uh, when he was laid up by the injury, but uh, uh, and I'm sure you know this. Maybe you haven't had to fight off any bad injuries, but man, how much of a bummer is that? Yeah. Uh, you know, you work, 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 and, and then you have something like that happen, yeah. especially in a pregame skate. Yeah. Uh, hard to keep your head up, but um, knowing him, I'm, I'm I'm sure he got through it just fine. Yeah, there. I think they were playing. I think they were playing San Diego that night. It was the opening game, and and uh, he'd called. I was at work, and he'd called, and I was one. You know, I was. I thought, okay, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing the game. And and I said, well, how to go today? Who are you actually playing with? Today? He goes, well, you know, a little uh, little mishap today, and, uh, and so he explained what happened. And uh, so he was pretty discouraged, but uh, it's it's all part of it, right? And he's he's been pretty fortunate, knock on wood, but. Mm-hmm. Uh, He's been pretty fortunate to be uh, pretty healthy through a, a five-year pro career so far. Yeah, and and I don't want you to answer questions for him, but was it a hard decision for him uh, to leave UND? Did he did he ask you your thoughts on that, or you just stay out of it? Well, it's you know those when you win like that, you know, and you you win a national title, mm-hmm. I think that uh, certainly makes it easier. And uh, it's always a hard decision, and. Uh, um, you know the one thing that these kids, uh, these these top end kids, have uh, tough choices to make is they have it they, they have it so nice here and uh, you know Brad and and the staff and Pooley and the whole group here the, you know it's a professionally run organization and and uh, uh, and it's hard to leave mm-hmm. uh, and on the other side it's you know pro hockey become a young game yeah and 
and uh, your clock is ticking and and uh, you have a you know a small window in most cases you got a very small window to earn to uh, earn so what you can earn, as, yeah earn as much money as you can and and uh, so uh, you know the difference between a, a guy who starts out at 21 and a guy who starts out at 25 uh, those are some some money making years that uh, certainly can be factors all right, um, I, we were talking before the uh, we started the show. Uh, there's a new Fighting Sioux documentary. It's coming out tomorrow. It's called Fighting Over Sioux. And uh, you hadn't heard about it yet, I don't think. Um, I think this is something that's that's really going to want to pique your interest there, Coach. Uh, it's, it's a feature-length documentary. This is all put together by an award-winning guy, uh, filmmaker and producer, but it's one-on-one -on -one interviews with tribal leaders, students, alumni, bloggers, reporters, politicians, and super bands, super fans. And it says, when the NCAA bans a small hockey town's Native American name and logo, a battle begins to save a college icon. Now, that's going to be on tomorrow. And uh, we are actually going to have filmmaker Matt Fern on the show tomorrow. So, so that's going to be a good one. But uh, I'm sure you'll figure out a way to, to catch that. And, and I do want to ask you, um, if somebody wants to come and watch your hockey team this year, when is your first home game? Do you know yet? Yeah, it's going to be the second week. Let's see, our, we, we start on the road um, the 9th and 10th. Uh, we, we start practice on the 28th of December. Uh, we're on the road 9th and 10th to Jamestown. The following weekend, we'll, we're, we're scheduled to be home. Uh, a couple different teams that we're waiting on, uh, some movement on schedule, uh, Williston, uh, and then uh, University of Mary. Uh, so we're waiting on that, uh, which which spot that's going to be, but it's going to be that weekend. So that'd be the, let's see, the 9th and 10th, uh, we're playing Saturday, Sunday in Jamestown, and then the following Friday, Saturday. So what would that be, the 16th, 17th? Okay. 16th, 17th is what we're, uh, uh, will be our, our home opening weekend all right and uh since i don't think i'm doing high school hockey this year which i'm going to miss dearly uh i do know an announcer who's available if you guys are looking yes. for somebody so <laughs> and i gotta find i gotta i gotta look into that and find out the right uh, uh it's a 20 that. minute drive from my yep. driveway to that rink so that would be perfect uh steve johnson uh, i wish you the best of luck uh i'm glad you're on the show today and i am so glad that umc is going to bring hockey back and uh, i think they made the right choice as a coach and and you've had nothing but success wherever you've been and I'm, I'm sure this is going to just keep right on rolling. And uh, I'm really super stoked for you. I think this is going to be a good time. Thank you so much for coming on. Thanks for having me, John. Oh, well, there you go. Head coach Steve Johnson, UMC Hockey is back. I can't wait to go check these out. Special thanks going out to Do So Photography for helping you uh, get today's show. Old Bobby Do So doing the Christmas cards now. And in fact, here's the easy part about it. You can do most of it from your computer. Go to dosophoto.com. Follow the instructions. Before you know it, you're going to have some awesome looking Christmas cards in your mailbox. Knowing Bob, he'll maybe even hand deliver them. You know, your senior portraits can still get done, business headshots, corporate pics. If you want to look the best, Duso Photography can do that. You can come and see our Duso Photography Wall of Fame here in the studios of GFBS. Call them up, 218-230-4325, or go to dosophoto.com. He'll even come to you. There you go again. Thanks, Steve Johnson. Tomorrow, the creator of the new documentary called Fighting Over Sue, Matt Fern, joins us on the release day. Man, this is going to be a great show. Hey, don't forget, we're now on Amazon Music. Tell your smart speaker to play GFBS Podcast, and it'll do it. And we're looking for your five-star reviews on Google, too, all right? Hey, make sure you like, share, and tag us, everybody. We're Grand Fork's best source, giving Grand Fork's an identity again.